Hi friends, time for another Squint Podcast. Uh, today I want to share with you from Psalm 130, verses 3 and 4. Uh, Psalm 130, verses 3 and 4. <clears throat> By the way, Psalm 130 is one of a group of psalms that are called Psalms of Ascent. And what that means is that the people of Israel, when they would go up to Jerusalem to worship God, to sacrifice and worship, because that's what they did in the Old Testament, uh, <clears throat> these were psalms of praise, psalms that they would sing, uh, reflecting and enjoying all of who God is as they're on their way to worship. So let's see what this psalmist has to say. Uh, in verses 3 and 4 of Psalm 130, <clears throat> If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who can stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can, with reverence, serve you. <clears throat> the psalmist is on his way up to, to worship, up, enjoying a time of worship. And he is praising God, because he says, Lord, if you kept a record of our sins, who could stand? And the answer is, nobody could stand. You know, the Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. All have sinned, and, for all have sinned and fall short of God's glory. Uh, there's nobody on the planet ever that was without sin other than the Lord Jesus. And so, God, who is absolutely righteous, cannot have sin before him. And so, uh, what can we do? How can we work? Well, that's why God allow the Lord Jesus Christ to become sin for us so that we, New Testament believers, can become the righteousness of God in Him. So, Jesus, for salvation, gave His life, became sin, and when He did that, God, the Bible calls this justification, but, and, and you can read all about it in Romans chapter 4, God declares the, uh, the guilty sinner absolutely righteous on the merits of what Jesus had done by his death, burial, and resurrection. Now, that's salvation. Now, our, our relationship with God, our sanctification, how we're set apart to live to God, <clears throat> uh, is also uh, based on our right relationship is based on the forgiveness that, that, that uh, the Lord has for us on the, by the blood of Christ. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9 that if we confess our sin, He, God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us or to purify us from all unrighteousness. Because, you see, sin cannot be before God. And so when we, as now uh, born-again people, who have been redeemed, who have been saved by the blood of Christ, we still have times when we, we fall short of what God wants for us. And based on the blood of Christ, uh, we can still come near God. Remember, sin cannot be before God. So what do we do? We confess our sin. That word confess in the Greek is homologeo, and it means if we just call it what God calls it, if we just acknowledge it, if we say it, God, I've sinned. Then, based on what Jesus has done, our sanctification, our relationship with God, is then we're, in, we're able to enjoy Him, His presence, His blessing, His favor. However, if we don't confess our sin, then what happens is, I've always used the, the idea of, uh, of a funnel. Just imagine a funnel, and uh, God pouring His blessings up here to us down here through the funnel. But when we sin, when we as Christian people sin, the funnel gets closed like a clogged drain, and God can't pour his blessings down on us unless we confess, homologeo, our sins, call it what God calls it. I've sinned, Lord, I screwed up, I failed, I need you. Uh, you know, Not to be saved again, but just to be forgiven, to experience that forgiveness, then that, that sin is taken away, and the funnel is wide open again, and we can enjoy the blessings of God. Well, that is all of what I think the psalmist is saying. He says, If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, who could stand? The answer is nobody.
But with you, there is forgiveness so that we can, with reverence, serve you. So I call this, God has removed the obstacles because of the forgiveness, his great forgiveness, not only for salvation, but for daily living, sanctification. Uh, God uh, create, removes the obstacles so that we can enjoy the blessings of God, so that we can serve God with reverence. That means we honor him. You know, the word revere, like uh, an awe or fear, or we honor God. Uh, we honor him and we serve him. How can we do that? Because our sins have been forgiven. They've been forgiven. God has removed the obstacles and allows us to come in to his presence where once before we were sinful creatures and couldn't, but now we can because of his great forgiveness. And in the New Testament, that forgiveness is found in and through the Lord Jesus Christ. So I call this God has removed the obstacles. So then what is keeping you from entering into God's presence every day, worshiping him and serving him? If you've got sin going on, if you've got some things going on in your life, all you need to do is pray and confess it back to the Lord, And assuming you are a believer. And he, it's done, it's all over with, and he's ready to enjoy and favor you. Enjoy your presence and favor you. If you've never acknowledged Christ, if you've never received Christ, then what you need to do is you need to place your faith in Christ. The Bible says that you need to confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And when you do, you'll be saved. And, and, you'll, be, and you'll be forgiven. And, and the obstacles for you to enjoy God's blessings and presence has been removed. And you can come and enjoy a great relationship with him. Okay, now I'm getting along and I'm going to stop right there. So that's uh, Psalm 130. God <coughs> has removed the barriers. <clears throat> and I pray and hope that you um, don't have any barriers between you and God. And if you do, that you will approach the Lord, that you'll place your faith in Christ, that you'll confess your sins whenever you have sin going on in your life, so you'll keep the communication between you and God wide open, because on his part, he's removed the obstacles. On your part, uh, make sure that uh, you communicate regularly with him about those things, okay? So we have a wonderful God and Savior in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, of course, to, to fill us and to guide us. And what a great psalm, Psalm 130, that reminds us of all these salvation and sanctification truths. All right, that's it for today. Have a fantastic week, and I'll check back with you next week.